Let's go ahead and get that shot chart and show you where all those shots came from for Aaron Gordon in the first quarter. First quarter. Where is he? Aaron Gordon. Dog, look at this. Look at this. Look at where it is. Look at where these shots are. That's what happens when you auto switch. That right there is what happens when you auto switch and you have a guard on a big. And that big knows what to do when he's switched off on by a little. If you're a big and you got a guard a little on you, you do this. You bully ball them in the paint. This corner three was whatever, right? And even this was wide open. He probably could have hit that, but it really didn't matter. Right here is where he went to work. When you could do this and there's no stopping for that because they're too busy up top doubling Jokic or switching off a of Jokic and Aaron Gordon is, is stuck with a mouse in the house. Mouse in the house, barbecue chicken, eat your breakfast. Make sure to finish your breakfast. And that's what Aaron Gordon did. I don't understand the logic of why Spo thought I'm going to give up Aaron Gordon in the paint rather than deal with Jokic and Murray up top doing the two-man game, which they eventually end up doing anyway, by the way. So it's kind of interesting of how that went because I really don't understand the theory. Like, is he going to have his real game plan in game two? Because your real game plan can't be, we're going to just auto-switch everything like the entire league has been doing for like five years. You're Spo. You're the one that withstood LeBron. LeBron wanted you out as a, as a coach early in that heat tank. When they were, what, eight and nine or seven and nine? They wanted Spo gone. LeBron went to the front office and said, Spo got to go. And the front office said, nah. And you withstood that. And y'all won two chips in four years. And now you've been back to the finals two more times now since LeBron skated and went, and went back to Cleveland. You have been held in high regard. You can't tell me the best game you had ready was we're going to auto switch. And if not, then we got a zone. And if you just look at this Denver Nuggets chart as a whole, you see where the bulk of the buckets are coming from. You see where the bulk of the bulk, the buckets are coming from. Because again, the threes were not falling. You see it here. The threes were not falling. All these threes are bricks. This is Brick City. Shout out to Jers. But in regards to even the corner threes, easiest three in basketball, they keep saying. Brick City last night. But they got their money in the paint and with the middies. In the paint and with the middies. And look at all these middies that they missed. And all these, buck and these, all these shots in the paint that they missed. As much as the Heat think, all right, well, our shooters, those shots are going to fall to me. These shots are also going to start falling for the Denver Nuggets. And what happens then? You tried to do your little switching thing. It didn't work. Aaron Gordon punished you. It forced you to adjust. The zone, I think the Nuggets were just playing with different ways to attack it. If it were a close game, I think they would know exactly what to do to dissect the zone. It's not like they've never seen a box and one before. It's not like they've never seen a 2-3 or a 3-2 before. So I think they'll be ready for that in game two. They'll watch some film. They get a couple of days off to figure that out. But ultimately, dogs, you look at this right here and know that this is Jokic. This is Aaron Gordon. This is Jeff Green. This is, you know, all these guys, Bruce Brown getting floaters in the lane like, you ain't stopping this. This is not going to go away. This is not an admiration. So I think the Heat are not going to be in this for long. I stand even firmer now in Nuggets in five. And I'm almost tempted to say Nuggets in four, but I think Nuggets in five is going to be the way to go.